Good evening. My name is Karina Olette, and I serve as the principal at Grand Star Elementary. With the unique challenges in this school year, we have put a strong emphasis on our social emotional needs of the students. We had the opportunity during our August professional development to look at what we already had in place and have continued to build on our current foundation. This year, when students arrive at school, they have a minimum of three adult contact points prior to the school day starting. Students are greeted in the car loop or when they get off the bus, during temperature checks, and then again by adults positioned in our hallway. This allows us the opportunity to have a positive interaction or pull students aside if they need additional support to transition from home to school. This is our second year at Grand Star to implement a morning meeting and incorporate social emotional curriculum of second step from preschool through fourth grade. The responsive classroom morning meeting is an engaging way to start the day. It helps to build a strong sense of community within the classroom through four components, greeting, sharing, group activity, and a morning message. In addition to our morning meeting, teachers are presenting their second step social emotional learning curriculum. This curriculum provides language and tools from perspective taking to calming down techniques. The units in each grade level all cover similar topics that build as students get older. The units include skills for learning, empathy, emotional management, and problem solving. Eyes are watching, ears are listening, voices quiet.
second step developed a three-week community rebuild unit this year to address the challenges students have faced in regards to COVID-19. We were able to review these lessons in August and present them in the first three weeks of school. It is exciting to know students have practiced these skills and are using these strategies in real life situations. the student body, what I appreciate um, about our kids is that they come from such diverse backgrounds, whether it's socioeconomically, um, you know, in, in every way. And so there's a certain genuineness to each of those kids who really is just looking for a place to fit in. And they find that here. They, they will arrive early 
and want to hang out with an Amy Hughes, who's one of our rock star freshman teachers, because she's like a second mom to so many. They want to stay late and get involved in activities, or maybe they're waiting for theater practice. Um, they find this place to be safe and accepting and um, really a home away from home, which that makes it so awesome because it's not just a place to learn for eight hours of the day. It's so much more to those kids. One thing I th think that is really special about our staff is that they really strive to make sure that our students are getting the best education. Uh, every teacher seems to be working as hard as they can to make sure that their lessons are innovative, that there is rigor in what we're doing, that it's meaningful, and that we're communicating with others. In the past five years, I've seen so many teachers taking chances, um, setting up projects, project-based learning for their students, um, getting them out in the field uh, so that they can see and experience things that feel more real to them. What I think makes Gardner Edgerton High School so special is the fact that Gardner Edgerton High School has so many different options and career paths that you can pick. If you want to be a chef, we have a culinary department. If you want to work on cars, we got that for you. Business, math, biology, we have lots of different career paths. We also have many extracurricular activities. We got FBLA, FCA. We got so many different things that you can participate in to do what you enjoy and what's your passion. Um, in my opinion, what makes Gardner Edgerton High School unique and outstanding is because even in a building with 1,700 kids, it feels like a small town. Um, you have, everybody knows everybody. The students um, make great relationships with the staff. The staff has great relationships in turn with the parents of the students. And everybody's just really well connected. Uh, I don't think a student could ever say that they went in the hallway and they didn't have someone to say hello, or that a teacher didn't greet them at the door, or something like that. It's wonderful that even though in a 6 a school, there is such a connection with everybody and there's a great support system here. So it's, it's wonderful. Good evening, USD 231 Board of Education members. Uh, my name is Jenny Adrian. I'm the principal at Edgerton Elementary. And tonight, uh, we are gonna show you some things that are going on at our school. I first wanna thank you uh, for voting and allowing extra time for our staff to be together at the beginning of the school year to ensure that we felt comfortable in the safety measures that we're able to provide for our students. So you'll get to see some of those in a few minutes. Um, I do wanna share with you Something I shared with staff the night before school started. Uh, one of my favorite movies is The Grinch. Um, I liked watching it when I was little. And I had seen this somewhere and I wanted to share it with staff and I want to share it with you. Um, my favorite part of that movie is when The Grinch goes into town and steals all the decorations and all the food and everything. And then he goes back. Well, then the next morning, all the Who's wake up and they're still celebrating the holidays. Um, I told staff, Teaching is the same thing. Um, COVID might have taken away some of the things that we're comfortable with and some of the things that we maybe take for granted, but it hasn't taken away our passion and love for kids and for teaching. And um, so I kind of likened it to the same thing. And hopefully in this video, you can see that that's still very true here at Edgerton. Thank you for your time.
and welcome to Gartner High School Basketball. We have a wonderful matchup today. The Gartner Girls against the Olathe East Hawks. Hi, my name is Todd Henderson. I am the producer of this wonderful broadcast that we bring, but I'm filling in for Jarius at this moment. And I have my wonderful, my good friend, I've been knowing her all her life, <laughs> Miss Danae Jones. How you doing on today? I'm doing good. How you doing, Todd? Man, I'm excited to be here. It's been a lot of things going on. Um, we've had to change a few things with the games because of the weather. A lot of changes. First it was the cold weather. Mm -hmm. and then, I'm sorry, first it was COVID. Yes. And then now it's the cold weather. So here are some of the changes that we've had to change. We had a few boy games that were canceled this past week and we've changed them over. Okay, we've changed, if you take a look here on your screen, as they switch over, we have the boys basketball game that will be, um, that was on Wednesday. It will be on now tomorrow versus Olathe West. And then while that game is going on, it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, followed by the varsity game. Mm -hmm. Then after that game, up on Monday coming up, this upcoming Monday, February 22nd, will be the second boys basketball game against Leavenworth. And then on next Tuesday will be the girls basketball game against Olathe Northwest. Yes. So what a wonderful time we have here. Well, let's talk about this game. Okay. Let's let's get caught up on this game. Yes. Um, we have um a player for our scouting report on Olathe East. Yes. What, tell me about her. Well, she's number 13. Her name is Aubrey Rogers. She actually is a leading scorer of Olathe East's team, and she has 147 points total this season already. She's a three-point shooter, and she shoots 70% from the free from the free throw line. And she's actually number three in rebounding, even though she's a guard, and she has 52 rebounds for the year already. Yeah, so we got our hands full with her. I asked the coach earlier who yeah. who was their star player. He, he said number 13. We got to play good defense on her. Also look out for number 33 yes, yes. on Olathe. Got a container. Now for our um, for our last four games, our girls have been going through a little slout right now. A little bit. And um, they've been down. They've lost four games, and they fought hard. And if it was we good look, games. if we look at those games. They lost to Shawnee Mission North, mm -hmm. 35 to 39. They lost to Shawnee Mission South, 44 to 47. Mm -hmm. Then they lost to Shawnee Mission West, 45 to 53. Mm -hmm. Then they lost to Olathe South, 35 to 45. So they've had a tough, a tough time mm -hmm. um, with these, the last four games. How do you get out of a slump? The right, you gotta, you gotta just come in with a lot of momentum. Um, which we'll touch on the keys to the game. Right. But you just have to make sure that they all have their head in the game, trust each other, play as a team, and box out is a huge thing so there's no second chances. Which brings us up to our player highlights. Mm -hmm. Who are the two girls that have to have good games on today? Well, we're looking at one of our underclassmen, number 24, Aaliyah Moss. She actually is a huge impact on our team. She's getting in there, she's getting scrappy, and she runs the floor really well. And that's somebody that the other team definitely has to keep eye on for us because she's really getting in there. And even though she's an underclassman, she's doing big things for our team. You're right, number 24, Aaliyah Moss, as a freshman, as too. As a freshman. She stepped up pretty big. Mm -hmm. And who else do we have? We also have number five, Sophia Seaman. Yes. I mean, she is our leading scorer. She's everywhere. Where she's scrappy. She matches intensity with Marcos all the time. And the, the between her and Marcos, when their energy is high, our team is great. And Sophia Seaman just does everything for us that we need from rebounding to shooting to defense to just being everywhere on the court that we need her to be. Something I found out about Sophia is that Sophia is um, McDonald's, I think, what do you call it, McDonald's um, award winner. Oh, nice. She's All-American, McDonald's All-American. All American. She just got voted for that this past week. What a wonderful that honor. That is an honor. Uh, actually nominated for that, I should say. That's an honor. What an honor for her, and we're so happy that she represents Gartner mm -hmm. High School. Now that comes to our last piece, and let's get to our keys of the game. All right. <laughs> We got some wonderful keys. If you're going to come out of a four-game slump, yep. you got to do some things. First, you got to get off to a quick start. Yes. Second, you got to match Marco's energy. She's got, got a lot her. of energy. Yes. And then you got to play defense. Tell me about getting off to a quick start. 
So get up to pretty much first quarter and third quarter, when we come to the start of the game and the start of the half, we have to get our momentum high from the beginning so we can get those quick points real fast. Because once we do that, it keeps the other team and it knocks them off their toes. Right. Got to hit threes. And as you can see, that yes. when they get off to a quick start, they can't be stopped. The second key, tell me about the second key. Well, we got to match Marco's energy. Like I said earlier, Marco's energy is on high all the time. And it's just amazing because she's on the floor, but she's popping up, she's grabbing rebounds, she's getting putbacks, and she has a beautiful up and under that she does. But if we can match her energy this whole game, the whole team, the whole team will be on and we will do great things. Well, that gets me to our third key, which is we got to play. Defense, every coach says yes. this. What, what, tell me about that. Defense is huge. The main thing about defense is not giving the other team second chances. We got to box out. We got to have high, intense, pressure defense, whether it's a zone or a 2-3 or a 3-2 or something that they just kind of make up. But we just have to make sure our defense is on at all times. Well, I tell you what, Danae, it's time for the game, and we got our national anthem that is coming up. So we're going to stick by for our national anthem. We want to thank you guys for being here for our pregame here on GEHS TV. Now stand by for the public announcer to give us our national anthem. This is just. That was Miss Jessica Savannah. What a wonderful job. You know, they called me earlier this year and they told Savannah me. Savannah Cott. Savannah. Jessica Savannah Cott. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes. I didn't get it right. You got it right. I didn't get it right. Okay. okay, well, we want to thank her for giving us that national anthem. They called us earlier this year and they told us that they wanted to make sure that all mm -hmm. the singers from the um, choral group got on to sing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. So at this time, we'll give you the starters. Yes. Hopefully they put the starters up on the screen here. But as always, we've had some wonderful starters. Like one of our key to the points, mm -hmm. or, or key points today was um, get off to a quick start. Quick start. And if you can't get off to a quick start. We have a lot of makeup to do. <laughs> well, number four is our starter for today. She goes by the name of Miss Kaylin Platt. Number five. Sophia Seaman, number 24, Aaliyah Moss, number 52, Miss Marcos, and number 55, Sage Lickte. Let me tell our Gartner family from the back, I am not a commentator. <laughs> well, you're doing good so far. <laughs> I'm just trying to get us through this. Mr. Dr. Jones, you know, Dr. Jones has an eighth of five. He's a principal. Mm -hmm. And um, when they changed the games, it just kind of changed his schedule. He'll be here in a few minutes. He loves our Gardner family, yes, and he's he going to be here with you. So I'm going to do my best 
Well, you're doing so, so good. You're doing real good. So, wait, I'm going to try to make this happen. Listen, I'm going to mispronounce some words. I'm going to say some things wrong. <laughs> and that's why I'm not a commentator. But we're going to have a good time on tonight. Well, as always, there's no more jump ball in high school basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm not for sure it's that because of COVID-19. But they take the ball on the side. At the beginning of the game, the visiting team gets the ball. That's a rule that they changed mm -hmm. in the state of Kansas this year. Yep. And then at halftime, the home team. Um, gets the ball, and we're getting ready. They're just moving some things around here, but we're getting ready for tonight's game. So here we go. Olathe East. Olathe East comes out. Obviously, you can see that our Gartner girls are in man to man. And when you're at the beginning of a game as a coach today, what do you tell your girls? At the beginning of the game, besides getting off to a quick start. What do you mean if, like, if we starting with the ball or if we're playing defense? Because it's a, two defense. different things. If we're playing defense. If you're playing defense, the first thing is going to be pressure. Pressure the ball at all times, especially the guards out, out, out top. And then for my post players, I'll tell them to keep the other girls out the paint by keeping the hand in their back. And there you go with um, Taylor Pratt. Platt, she tries to start off with a three, comes up a little bit short. Latha East looks like they have some tall girls on their team. Um, but as you can see, Marco's already starting off with a high energy like we talked about at the beginning of the game. Um, and so Aaliyah Moss with the rebound. Mm -hmm. And that was good pressure defense. They had a double team over here up in the corner of the of the court on defense, and that caused them to panic and then turn the ball over. It's a good start. I think the coach heard our keys of the game because we shot one for two already mm -hmm. coming out the bat. Miss Sophia Seaman with the big three yep. to take the lead here early. And we're going to see what type of defense they're going to play on today. Number 13 for Olathe East, Abby Rogers comes out. She's off just a little bit. Bringing the ball up the court, number 55, um, Sage Liktag. See how Sage. And the great thing about Sage is she doesn't have much height, but she gets in there, she gets rebounds, and she's a really tough player in the paint, even though she doesn't have much height down there with those post players. One thing I found out about Sage as I've been watching her all year is that she's like the um, the all-purpose player. Once again, three. And the three is knocked down by Aaliyah Moss. Three, three straight shots. Mm -hmm. Three three-pointers. What did we say key number one was? Get off to a fast start. Get off start. to a big jump start. And that's how you get off to a start, make it the three. So they're, they're two, they're one, I'm sorry, two out of three. And they got to play some defense on Aubrey. They do. Aubrey has her first shot that she just made right now. And that was kind of a little easy one that she got right in the paint. You got to keep her out the paint in the middle at all times because those are going to be easy shots she can take down. Her three points, she does shoot the three, but she's got like 16 out of 66 chances that she tried. That was a block by number 10, Breland Rogers. Taking it right in, then Sophia Great returns the favor. By number five. Yep. She returns the favor. And just like I said, one of our keys has to be defense. And defense is going to be a big thing today. You can make all type of threes all day long. Mm -hmm. But if you play no defense, you'll be out there like the Brooklyn Nets. Yes. Where you're scoring 185 points, but your other team, you give up the team, um, the other team, 190 points. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't you matter. Yeah. Play, you know, good offense. You got to play good defense to win. Yes, you do. So as I was saying, Sage Licktag, she's like the all-purpose player. It's like she plays, you know, every position as still by number three Cunningham. We got five so and Sophia draws the foul. Sophia was going to the lane with her left hand. She's going to the free throw line now. And if you're gonna have an all purpose player, what's what's the what what is their point? What is what do they have to do um, to get the team motivated? They really just have to do all the dirty work. Mm. At least until the team catches on to their energy and then joins them in on it. So we have a replay here. So Sophia Platt comes up the field. You can see her get hacked right here by number 33, Kayla Taylor. And Sophia drops that second free throw. So what type of they in man? Aubrey. They have good pressure defense right now. They're doing a double team up top right now in the corner. That makes a frenzy panic right now. 
But the no. chance about that is they always leave a post player open, so they have to have that backside drop down on defense, or it will be broken down every time. Uh, Olathe East has a girl named Ray Richardson, number 24. She's one of their best players, but she's not playing because she got hurt her last game. So she's kind of out right now. But number 33, Kayla Taylor, at the line for to shoot two free throws. That's the second person they're trying to get the ball to today besides Aubrey. Steps up to the line, hits the first one. As you can see, she tried to get the ball down low. As she gets the ball down low, Kayla tries to take the charge. Doesn't work. Now she's back at the free throw line, Kaylee Taylor. For the second shot, and she sees Locks it. on the second shot. So it looks like we got a full court press by the Olathe East Hall. The last couple times Moss take it, has taken it out, she has struggled on getting it into her players. The last time they had a turnover, and this time another a deflection. So we have to be careful with taking the ball out. With the name. It's been um, great being with you already. Do I have my brother? Your brother is coming. Dr. Jones is in the house. Dr. Jones is in the house. <laughs> Once again, he's a busy man, and he's coming in, I mean, with his coat on. He is ready to go. He's my right hand. And so we're so glad that he's back. He's going to jump in. He might, he might be a little slow to get it, but you know what? That's what we do here at Gardner. We adjust, and we adjust very well. So Jerry Jones is going to take it over here in a second. But as you can see, we already got a substitute with Gardner number 11 steps into the game, Aubrey Lightman. And at this time, I'm gonna go back to the truck and do what I do. And tell us what to do. And then I'm gonna give it over to my buddy, Mr. Jones. Amen. Dr. Jones. On the replay, we got number 11, Liker penetrated and she draws the foul out. First free throw is knocked down. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, fans. We got Dr. Jones in the house. Second free throw was good. 10 to 6 over Olathe East so far. Four minutes and 48 seconds left. First quarter. Easy penetration in by Olathe East, number 10. Brayley Rogers. Skip pass and three point shot attempt by number four, Platt. She gets her own rebound. And I know that's something that you're very much smiling about, isn't it? Good ball rotation. There's an offensive foul committed by the Trailblazers. See the ball inbound. So we're going to throw it across the court. Eight to ten is the score. We're trying to stop. As we see a nice good defensive play down under. And she was trapped for able to get the ball out. See Marcos moving us aside. Sophia was able to stop it, but that's a personal foul that's going to be committed by Platt. And the thing about that is when we talked about defense, we talked about boxing out in our keys to the game. They gave, they allowed her to get that rebound and gave her a second chance at another shot, which she dropped the foul. And now number 20 is at the line shooting her free throws. We saw Seaman going after and swatting the ball, but uh, not able to <coughs> take the rebound in that first free throw was missed. So some good out of that. Something Kate good out Whitehead. of it. So it's a foul worth fouling. As we see here in the replay, she goes up and Seaman stops her, but then Platt goes in to try to stop it and gets part of the wrist. So that's a personal foul. That's her second foul early on here, just three minutes and 51 seconds left in the first quarter. Both free throws are missed. Both nice both rebound by Seaman. So we have a chance to extend the lead from two to four or five. Like yeah. we tried to force it in the middle and turnover it is. Left Riker. number 20 on the baseline wide open. Kate Whitehead knocked down the layup. And it's a 30 second timeout that's been called. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching the MSTC Sports GEHS. We'll be right back. 
At Price Chopper, we know we're not the only grocery game in town. That's why we're always chopping prices. We're passing along the savings on our fresh cut meat. We're fueling your squad with affordable party trays and meals to go. And scoring you great low prices on all your game day favorites. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows Price Chopper. All right, and we are back after the timeout. It's 10 to 10. Think about that last round of plays where we turned the ball over, one of the very rare turnovers that Liker has, but she did, and of course, number 20, who had missed the two free throws, mm -hmm. made us pay for Kate Whitehead. So we need to put some more points on the board as we see Liker driving the ball down the court. She's getting that same spot, almost got another turnover, but this time they're gonna call the personal foul. Right on her wrist, that's a foul we'll take. The way they're playing that, I'm gonna call it a wristband. <laughs> I don't know, that was kind of dumb. It really was, wasn't very smart. That personal foul on number 13, Aubrey Rogers. You're not supposed to be laughing at that, Miss Jones. <laughs> you know, sometimes bad jokes are still yeah, funny, yeah, even though yeah. they're bad jokes. Yeah, that's a daddy, <laughs> bad daddy joke, principal joke. So, see, Sophia Seaman going up for a three-pointer, missed that completely. But personal foul on, yeah, they called a, they didn't call a, a personal foul, they called it out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And see number three Cunningham, she gets in there and she gets those rebounds like that, but I thought she got pushed when she grabbed the ball, but referees thought differently, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess we're sitting too far up to see that it touched the out of bounds line and we didn't really see it happen on the hand. Got some man-to-man -man defense right now. Missed ball, but we're gonna see another rebound. And I know that's uh, something that gets in under your skin. Yes, because these second chances kills us every time. The Trailblazers have got to stop these second chances. Yep. Rebounds are very important on defense when it comes to their games. Nice rebound by Newman on the other end. Number five, Michelle, got a hand in there and got the ball knocked out. 30 checks in for Since substitution number 30, Jillian Reese is replacing Kaylee Taylor. I'm sorry, Kaylee Taylor. Drive, but wasn't ready for that. And 40. Got to stop the ball. Rebound, second chance again. Number five, Michelle Sn Sneller. Schneller. Hope I said her last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. She played a really tough, tough, tough game in the, in, in the paint right there. I mean, she dropped the foul, she got the ball, and now she's at the free throw line. She free throws. The first foul was committed by number 33, Newman, as we'll see here in the replay. We see the missed, missed layup. And of course, the attempt to try to stop uh, after the rebound and the second chance. Newman was able to hit her on the hand, but the first free throw was missed by Schneller. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. see if she can make the next one. There was movement on the uh, line, and I believe that was by Williams. She stepped in, so they get a third opportunity. Oh, Coach Finley would have had us on the line for that one. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and she makes a save. She knocked right down the, free the third free throw attempt that she got. So late the East has the lead by one, 11 to 10. Another See me three. with the three. She's been off. <laughs> She continues to throw it up. The last, the three be attempt before that missed everything. But you want them to keep shooting, but that's going to be a turnover committed by Olathe East. Trail, bra trail Blazers ball. So getting back on the court is number 55, Lick Tig. Lick Tig. We learned that it's pronounced Lick Tig. Lick Tig. Lick Tig. So. Mm -hmm. As we see number three, Cunningham dribbling the ball down the court, turning it in to Williams. Williams big performance is back out to Lick Tig for a three-point attempt, missed. A save by Williams, Lick Tig. Ball was taken by number 22, Mills. Trailblazers try to do full court press. Got a man-to-man -man defense at this moment. Good jump out by number 40, Williams. It's gonna be another personal foul. She had one quick one. We 
that'll be her second personal foul. You know, oh, but fouls like that is so tippy-tack. I mean, post players jump out all the time like that, but that's not necessarily a foul. It's just a jump out. Got to let the kids play. Absolutely. And that was her first personal foul. See Cunningham all over. Marcos is going out. Nice little turn. Wow. She couldn't get it one way, so she went sideways, and that was a good basket by Taylor. It was, it was, you got to give her props for that one. That was definitely a great move. And anytime you put Marcos out of the paint, it's kind of, Marcos doesn't do good way out there. So that was kind of out of her comfort zone at that point, but Taylor did make up and she made it worth it. Turnover committed by the Lady Trailblazers. One minute, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. This is GEHS TV, MSTV, MSTC Sport. Drive. This time, almost looked like she was set, but they're saying no. They're calling that foul on Newman. It's going to be Newman's. She just she got a foul not too long ago committed. Let's take a second look at their on the replay. Newman's second personal foul. As we see number five, Schneller shooting two free throws. That was the fifth. Down the first free throw. That was the fifth as we see here. A series of plays. Newman did not quite get set. Made contact. And so, of course, that's going to be on the defense. She wanted the call. <laughs> wasn't able to. The second basket is good. As we see number 24 in the game, Moss. Cunningham brings the ball down court. Skip pass and deflected out of bounds. It's a little low. Just a little low. Just a little bit higher to get it across the court. Brady Rogers was able to disrupt that pass. <clears throat> Looks like Marcos is getting set to inbound the ball. Liktaj gets the ball. Yeah, and she drives towards her right to Moss. Moss looks, thinks about it. She continues and heads over to Cunningham. Cunningham once again. <clears throat> this time she gets it back, but that that inside pass to Williams has not worked uh, so far this game. We've had several they, turnovers. Olathe East is really doing good with the backside help with their post players, and our, our post players are struggling with trying to get the ball because they are bringing that other post over and and smashing down on them every time, especially with Marcos, which is a very smart, smart ball for that team. Absolutely. Ball was tipped out of bounds by the lady. Soraya and Marcos are going to have to figure out what to do to help. It's going to be another, another, foul. another foul on Williams. That'll and be her Soraya second Williams. personal foul. Williams and Newman <clears throat> both have two personal fouls this first half. So Ryan Williams is going to have to be careful because she gets one more foul. She's going to have to sit out until the second half. At least most of the time, that's what coaches do because they're already in foul trouble. Number 33, Kaylee Taylor, she missed her first free throw. We just saw number one, uh, Lauren Havlick, replace Williams. So far, the missed free throws have allowed the score to be closer than, than what it could be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> They've missed about five free throws. You see both those free throws missed, and we have not scored in quite some time. Have you scored since I've been at the desk? <laughs> 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 Maybe I need to go back. Oh, brother. <laughs> five point four so we can seconds. score some more. Yeah, we we'll score some more. <laughs> That was a personal foul committed by number 10, Rogers. That's her first personal foul, fifth team foul. Big Tide is taking the ball, the ball in. Newman or Moss gets pushed. So that's going to be a personal foul on number 33, Taylor. Hope the fans appreciate that. And that was the appropriate call. That would be the sixth team foul for the Lady Eagles. Still have to get 
the ball inbound, which has been kind of a some difficult. It's been difficult. Only got 3.0 seconds to go. Back into Marcos. Marcos unable to hit that. Well, it's at the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back for second quarter. You're watching GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. Trailblazers, 15 to 10. The last quarter, the first, not the first half, the last half of the quarter, Our Lady Trailblazers did not score. So they had a lead, a four point, at least a four point lead, and um, it dwindled, and now it's been a nine point turnaround. We're down by five. We hope to get things back on track as we see Lick Tide coming in for a drive, unable to score. Lick tie, knock the ball away. By Sophia Seaman, driving the, driving the ball down court to number 11, Liker, and kind of a wild, wild shot. That's kind of rare. Little off balance. It'd been nice to get a foul call for a body, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, number 10, Brayley Rogers is bringing the ball up to court. Drive to the basket is good by number five. Schneller, 17 to 10 is the score. Oh, in and out. It took by scene, but it came right back out. See here on the replay. The ball just came out. Couldn't get any closer than that for Big Tug. And we see the personal foul on the other end. So shooting two free throws or shooting one and one. Braley Rogers. Big Tug started to step in, but she makes the first basket. So it's an eight point advantage in favor of the Eagles. The Trailblazers definitely have to pick up their momentum this quarter before going to the half because they want to come out with a blast third quarter when they come back. Down by nine. Big Tide turns the ball over. There's too many turnovers. I'm sure Coach is not appreciating that. And you're right. They are doing a good job of trapping and denying. See Rogers taking the ball calmly up the court. No rush. Big Tide gets a hand in there to try to steal it. You see number 30 thought about it. Unable to hit it. The ball was not deflected by anyone. It was simply not a bounce. So a turnover. Lady Eagles. You want to see the Lady Trailblazers score. Just yes. even if it's a two-point basket, just to show that they're still living and breathing. We'll even we're going to call an offensive foul against the Lady Trailblazers. That's going to be a personal foul committed by number 52, Marcos. Take a look at the replay. Marcos comes up to set the screen. Yep. She gonna, wasn't quite planted yet, so they did call that offensive foul. Yeah, that was a good 
football move right there. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong sport. They call it every time. Good box out by Marcos. Yes. So I saw one of our players do something that you said don't do. Don't swat it away. Take the take mm -hmm. the rebound. Thankfully, Platt was there. Platt was fouled. Foul on the floor. It's going to be one and one. This will be the seventh foul for the Lady Eagles. Let's see Platt shoot free throws. Well, the front end of a one and one. So two baskets and 13 turnovers is what the Lady Trailblazers have done and it still continues to be a drought, a scoring drought. As we see the numbers were on their side. <laughs> oh wow. That was a good basket there by Reese. 21 to 10 is the score, 11 point. Trailblazers 11. gotta get back. Trailblazers have gone almost an entire length of a quarter since they scored last. See Sophia try to come in and drive, but she didn't have a good angle. So a point blank shot that was missed. A little defensive pressure. Basket is good. Basket is good number, 30, number 30, Jillian Keese. She knocked that down with two people's hands in, their, in her face. So. That's, a, that's a full timeout. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. On behalf of everyone in our community and in healthcare, thank you for doing your part. We appreciate your doing your part to keep us all safe. When in public, stay six feet away from others. Wash your hands often for at least 20 seconds with soap and water. Wear a mask. Together, we are slowing the spread of this virus. And together, we are saving lives. And we are back. It's 23 to 10. Our Lady Trailblazers have been in a scoring drought. On the other end, the Olathe East Eagles have really uh, scored extremely well. As we see, their coach is coaching with energy, great energy. On the, the Eagles other side. have scored the last 13 points straight. I believe the Eagles, it almost seems like they scored more than that because it was 13, 10 to 6, I think, at one time. Mm. And Lady that, Trailblazers just has to get their momentum back, and they got to pick their heads up. Because at this moment, it's kind of like they're kind of drooping down a little bit, but we just need a little fire put back into them. This is the time where we need Marcos's energy to come from her to the rest of her teammates so we can pick up the momentum. So Lick Tide's taking the ball up the court. Five minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first half. Some Moss driving. Someone needs to get in as we see another deflection. They're just really on it. And that was number 20, Kate Whitehead, who deflected the ball out of bounds as we see Sophia Seaman setting up to take it out. <clears throat> well, he called a personal foul. This time it's on Reese. Uh, prior to the inbound. So that's going to be another opportunity to score points. We missed the last front end of the one and one. So let's see if Marcos can capitalize. 18 fouls. Both teams. Mm -hmm. A little bit too hard. Cunningham try to get in there and get a rebound. She's just a little shorter than that post player. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, ball, put in bounds, but <laughs> ball out of bounds from the Lake the East. Trailblazers ball. Beach could not get there in time. Get the pass. So 23 to 10. Hand off by Lick Ty. As we saw the graphic right now, we have more turnovers than we do points. So foul on the play. Lick Ty almost made that goal. She created a hole for herself, and that's just what we see from her. She just does great when she just gets in the paint. Knocks down the first free throw. We see here in the replay, Lick Tig driving after the pass from Marcos. And as you said, she made it. 
happens. She makes she makes both free throws. Yep. So there goes the scoring drought. Now we need to field some field goals to fill in with four minutes and 40 seconds to go in this first half. We just need Lick to keep creating like she does. Like that was a great hand deflection because it went right off of the Olathe East Lady's leg. So yep. it is now Trailblazers ball. So Trailblazers have a chance to create a score a, a scoring streak on the positive end as we see Lick taking the ball of court after listening to some instructions from Coach Liker. And Lick was not one of our highlights to watch this game, but she's really creating for the Trailblazers, and we've seen her deflect and just get and making her own way so she can just kind of try to keep the Trailblazers in the game. Look. She just had got a rebound just now. That's right, that's she, right. And it's now Trailblazers ball, second chance. If you recall the last game that we hosted together, you know, uh, one of the games we saw that she was really, really, really making some plays, making some drives. So you see her shoes are untied, hopefully let her tie her shoes up. Mm -hmm. So, chance to get this to under double digits into single digits. Mm -hmm. These free throw shots, they now have 10 fouls on the Lady Eagles side. Lake Todd misses the first free throw. Here, here we have a replay. Lake Todd's in there, she gets the rebound. But number 11. <coughs> pushes her and creates that foul for her to shoot those free throws. Second free throw was good. See the ball was brought up the court by Rogers. The ball was deflected. Cunningham and Platt were over in that corner. Defending, uh-oh, Seaman comes Seaman in. Seaman off the court. Losing control of the ball, but she's got it back. Seaman's playing like she wants something to happen. That ball was last touched by the Olathe Eagles. Stays on the Trailblazers baseline. Going out for a breather on Marcos. Well, Marcos is going out for a breather. Well. Coming back into the game is Williams. Williams, remember, she has two personal fouls. Hopefully she can redeem herself. Lob up top to Seaman. Lick Todd makes a way in the middle. Oh, Attempt, but she misses. Oh. Boy. Defense, defense, defense. Cunningham gets her hand in there, knocks it out of bounds. Pressure defense is what we need from our Lady Trailblazers. And at that moment, Cunningham did great with getting the ball out of bounds. Yes. Check him up a little bit. So Williams limping a little bit. You see that nice drive. He just wanted to go. She did everything. Right. Everything right. She just got to finish it. <laughs> Soft touch on the end. Everything right, but it's it's going to go down eventually. She's going to knock it down. She's getting she's giving herself enough time to get it in. She's going to get it. Nice tip by Lick Tide. See a double team sitting near the free throw circle. Getting a shot off. The ball is taken away by Cunningham. Cunningham drives the ball up the court. Give it to Lick Tide. Lick Tide is ready to make something happen. Create her shot. The ball was blocked. blocked. But. Seaman to cut off the ball. And swap team! There you go. That's how you do Seaman it. Seaman knocks it. You can do it. I can do it better. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it. That is what can. we see. Hopefully, that amazing play right there, just getting the ball knocked out of there, can give us a change. Here's the replay with the amazing block. By Sophia Seaman. Absolutely. Marcos, Marcos, great defense in, inside on the paint. They haven't lifted too Good. many points. That was a great box out. I seen five jerseys on the Trailblazers boxing out. Lick Tock taking the ball around her, around her back. See Cunningham pass it off to Seaman for a three point attempt. And it's off, off the mark. Oh, it looked like it was. Off of number 11's foot, so it rolled right on the bounds. Trailblazers ball. <laughs> Tamia Davis. See the ball into Cunningham. Cunningham gets the ball to Seaman. Seaman takes it up for a nice shot. Now that's nice. how you finish. That's how you finish. So 15 to 23. 
only an eight point advantage now. I come to the assumption and belief that it was Siemens block that got the, the, the pace of the game changed. There you right? go. There Our you Trailblazers go. is getting on it now. There we go. Personal fouls being committed by number four, Platt. That's her. That is now the ninth team foul. That's going to be her second personal foul. As we see in that replay with Seaman taking oh, the ball to the hoop. third personal foul. Yep, yeah, taking the ball to the hoop with Seaman. And that is now, as they said, the third personal foul committed by number four, Platt. We see number 10, Rogers shooting the front end of the 101, and she makes it. Back up to a nine point lead. Free throw is good. 10 point lead, 25 to 15, two minutes to go in this first half. The goal right now is to close up the gap so when we come back from the half, we can start off with a good strong, great pass into Marcos. Foul from the over the back. First of foul, looks like it may have been by number 30. That was on Reese, that's her second personal foul and Marcos will be shooting two as she's in the act of shooting as we see here in the uh, replay thrown into Marcos and she went up. Of course, there was a lot of body that was connected on the defender. Free throw was missed. Gotta make these free throws. Rare opportunities that we get a chance to score in this matchup. Out the defense. And that one, she did everything right. It just Sophia Seaman stole the ball back. Trailblazers ball again. But a wild shot. It was not off balance. Up. That was very smart of Rogers. Rather than driving through. You know, number 10, Bradley Rogers is a freshman. Wow. She's playing a great game as a freshman. She really has. She's seen him driving the ball. Unable to score. Marcos gets the rebound and goes back up. But it wasn't really, I don't know if Marcos realized where she was or if she was trying to create the foul. Almost like a carry as the ball came I'm up seeing a, the I'm, just, I'm seeing a few carries that they're not calling. <laughs> there we go. Turnover committed by the Lady Eagles. Right, Litai has the ball. There and we go. it's good. <laughs> and Vince was going to see Litai knock it down. 10 point lead for the Lady Eagles. That's big. We just got to keep. Playing hard and closing this gap before the half. 40 seconds to go. She almost traveled. Travel. And she did travel. And he caught it. That's great. Great call by the ref. Here's the replay. Licktop goes baseline. Pulls up, creates, and knocks down the two. Great, great, great shot by Licktop. Trailblazers ball after turnover of a travel from the late to east. Under 30 seconds. Well, they wait to try to take the final shot. And try to create more of a turnover. Committed. Too many turnovers this first half. Way too many turnovers. A lot of these turnovers are made from trying to force the pass where a player is not open. Our ladies definitely have to keep their feet on the ground and stop trying to throw the ball in the air. So that way, if they don't have a, a pass, they can jump stop fake it, and then possibly find somebody else to throw to. Well, that was deflected and by Rebound by Licktai. Jump ball was called. And the possession arrow remains with the Lady Eagles, so they'll keep the ball on this end, but you love Licktai's uh, aggressiveness. Yes, she great aggressiveness. In, she was in the midst of both of those uh, rebounds. Had a hand on us. So that's a 30-second timeout that's being called by the Lady uh, Trailblazers. 4.1 seconds to go uh, in this first half. So your goal here is to not allow any more damage. You want no to go more damage. in no more than 10 points down at the half if you're the Lady Trailblazers. We cannot let them go out with a shot in this last four seconds because that is going to bring the momentum 
down so much that when they come back from third half, they have to really get themselves back up. We will see what happens these last four seconds. Both coaches have met with their scholar athletes to let them know what they expect. And we shall see what occurs. Ball on the baseline, I like the East. Pass it into the lob in the middle. Marcos. And the ball is off the mark, no basket by Schneller. So at the end of one half, Olathe East Eagles 27, the Lady Trailblazers 17. Olathe East will be right back after this time out. When it comes to higher education, Johnson County Community College delivers more for your money. More opportunities to learn outside the classroom, more interaction with caring instructors, more personalized attention with supportive student services. Discover more at JCCC. Change your life through learning. Change your life at Johnson County Community College. Call 913-469-3803 or visit jccc.edu to learn more. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I'm having a big lunch and then just a snack for so dinner. we're just... using a speakerphone in this store. Is that a good idea? One of the ways I do that is to get them out of the home. If you're looking for a grout brush. This Guard, is did the... he ask for your help? No. 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 We all see it. We all see it. He has blue hair. OK. Blue. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but Keep we can coming. protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Keep it coming. You don't know him. And welcome to our halftime show where we have the Blazerettes performing. Enjoy. And we will be back after this commercial. Those are your Blazerettes. You're watching GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. Bison have a unique response to storms. In the face of adversity, they turn together and run directly into the oncoming weather. They don't try to hide from it or sit idly by, waiting for it to pass. The herd addresses it head on, together. Kansas is no stranger to challenges. Our state motto, to the stars through difficulties, lives beyond the state crest. It's emblazoned on our souls. It's the thread that connects the fabric of Kansas. We were made by hands that toiled in the unforgiving land, forged on the belief that freedom is our greatest calling. Kansas will be waiting. We'll be free to explore again. Until then, we'll make it through this the only way we know how, head on and together.
Black History Month. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela, the Gardner Edgerton Public School District, is proud to join our nation in honoring Black History Month throughout the month of February. Also known as National African American History Month, this annual celebration commemorates the contributions and achievements by black Americans and serves as a time for recognizing the pivotal role of African Americans in the story of the United States of America. Founded by historian Carter G. Woodson, Negro History Week was first celebrated on February 12, 1926 to commemorate and celebrate the contributions to our nation made by people of African descent. The date coincides with the birthdays of abolitionist, editor Frederick Douglass and President Abraham Lincoln. By the late 1960s, through the civil rights movement and growing awareness of black identity, Negro History Week evolved into Black History Month on many college campuses. In 1976, President Gerald Ford officially recognized Black History Month during the U.S. Bicentennial, expanding Negro History Week into a month-long celebration. He called upon the public to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Since then, U.S. presidents have designated February as Black History Month each year. The theme of Black History Month 2021 is the Black Family, Representation, Identity, and Diversity, chosen by the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. Thank you, Gardner Edgerton Public Schools District, for your support of Black History Month 2021. And we'll be back after this brief message. Whereas, Kansas has a rich history as being a part of the Underground Railroad, a network of people who work together to hide and transport freedom seekers on their journey north. And, Whereas the Underground Railroad played a significant role in the elimination of slavery in the United States, and was a foundation for future civil rights movements, and... Whereas we are deeply motivated by the efforts of the courageous people who traveled the Underground Railroad and looked to Kansas as a gateway to freedom, as they have been a source of inspiration to generations of Americans, and... Whereas Kansas has 29 counties who are part of the Freedom Frontier National Heritage Area, and... Whereas the state is home to 21 Underground Railroad Network to Freedom sites managed by the National Park Service, which continue to tell the story about the nation's struggle for freedom that did not end with the Civil War. And whereas, in appreciation of the efforts of those who manage and preserve the sites of the Underground Railroad in Kansas and those from around the world who have committed themselves to document and share the stories of the Underground Railroad and the enduring struggle for freedom in Kansas. Now, therefore, I, Laura Kelly, Governor of the State of Kansas, do hereby proclaim September 2020 as National Underground Railroad Month in Kansas and ask all Kansans to join me in honoring those from our past who pursued freedom by traveling the Underground Railroad and in expressing gratitude for those who helped them on their way and to join together to continue the fight for freedom and equality for everyone. You are watching the Olathe East Hawks, not the Lady Eagles, the Lady Hawks who are taking on our Lady Trailblazers. We're gonna look at some highlights from the first half. We see here the score is 27 to 17. The Lady Hawks are leading. So break this down for us, Coach Jones, as you see these highlights. See Lick Tide taking the ball around to Seaman. Seaman knocks down that three-point shot. Great basket. Seaman passes it to Moss. Knocks down another three. Uh, 
and we see another. Cunningham gives it to Seaman, and she gets in between two people and knocks the layup down. Marcos passes it up to Liktai. Liktai brings it up to court, and she creates the shot and knocks it down. So those are our replays. Those are our highlights for the first half. Uh, you are watching GTHS TV, MSTC Sports. We are bringing to you the competition between the Lady Hawks of Olathe East and the Lady Trailblazers of Gardner Edgerton. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Adam Winters, the Kansas Highway Patrol. The Kansas Highway Patrol public resource officers across the great state of Kansas have a message for you. Three out of every four car seats are installed incorrectly. Please read your owner's manual and vehicle manual to learn how to install your car seat correctly. When driving on Kansas highways and you see a trooper in a safety vest and you see the orange cones, you're in a construction zone. Please remember, slow down, don't drive distracted, and move over, it's Kansas law. Now that you've seen us, Make sure you see us and all other first responders and road workers. Move over. Thank you for joining us here on MSTC Sports, home of the Trailblazers. Join us on February the 20th, tomorrow as the Late the West takes on Gardner Edgerton. We also have our Lady Trailblazers taking on 22nd, taking on Leavenworth, or sorry, our boys will be playing Leavenworth on Monday, February the 22nd. So these are our boys playing. They'll be taking on Leavenworth, the Pioneers, and then those are the games that we missed that had to be re rescheduled. And so we will see those competitions. You can find all of the action right here on MSTC Sports. Well, to start this second half, we see our Lady Trailblazers taking the ball out as it's uh, given to Lick Tig to start the half. And you would love to see the game start as it, this half start as it did the first half where they had two three-pointers. Yes, from the beginning. I was almost ready to go back outside to the truck. Um, so that we can get some three-pointers going because they made them. When I came here, it's almost like I was the boogeyman and I scared them. I guess Todd was our good luck charm at the beginning of the game, huh? he, he must have been. He must have been. Always good to hear Todd Henderson, who is really instrumental in this uh, production with Hindu Productions. You see the basket score. As, uh, 33, Kaylee Taylor knocks down the two over Marcos's hands. Lady Hawks picking up where they left off. Back to a 12-point advantage. You see Lick Tide driving and a nice little sideways. That ball looks like it was deflected out of bounds last by a Hawk, a Lady Hawk. Trailblazers on the baseline. First half, I had my wrong bird of prey <laughs> called the Eagles, and they are the Hawks. You see the ball headed out to Moss. Moss hands the ball back out to Lick Tide, who drives, but passes back out to Liker. Tiger's getting some starting time here. We see down low, Marcos. Nick Tiger take the ball. Not, she did not have the numbers and did not have anyone set up. That was kind of an ill-advised. It's almost as if she's doing a backdoor drive to the side. The way she's tossing the ball towards the basket. And typically you would say she's off balance, but she actually makes a lot of those shots and then she knocks them down. So it's hard to really critique it when she usually does knock down that shot all the time. It's kind of her signature move. Yes, it definitely is. Moss is on the defense. Great Moss defense gets by the, the Trailblazers. Nice rebound by the freshman, getting the ball back out to Liker. Let's see what Liker's able to do, and she was tripped. Three point basket Okay, if they had missed, I was going to get up and leave, and then you were going to have to do the whole outfit. I was going to tell Todd. But that was a beautiful off the off balance pass. Very nice. As she was as Moss was falling, she got it out there to that 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 side wing. And Seaman gets the ball. Ball was deflected out of bounds. But it was deflected, so it stays Trailblazers ball. Great hustle by Sophia Seaman. That's now a chance to take this down to within seven, possibly six points, as we see. The replay, nice defensive Seaman. play by Seaman. And this is great, because this is third quarter. We're getting off to a great start. That's one of our keys to the game. We, this is like what we like to see by our Lady Trailblazers. Moss, Moss to the middle. 
in, a, in and out of the ball. Oh. As a basketball player, that's your most upsetting shot ever is when it goes in and throws right on back out. Yeah, that's upsetting because I know how I feel sitting up here. <laughs> <laughs> Disrespectful. Marcos was amazing with getting her hands right in front of the, the player as soon as she took it. Oh. I say change the basket hoops after this game because something's wrong. <laughs> that was another basketball number 20 Whitehead, and they have an 11-point lead. Ball was deflected, but saved by Seaman. She drives it down towards the middle. Oh, thank you. Okay, Moss on the three. It is good. One point basket. Eight point lead for the Lady Hawks. As the Trailblazers are cutting at the lead. Oh, wow. But you, you, you got to apply the defense of Moss. She's not letting up. That's going to be her first personal, first team foul, so that's a good foul. It's a great foul, and we're seeing her come a little bit more alive this, this half. First half, she played a little bit more timid and kind of pranced around a little bit. Um, for whatever reason, she wasn't playing her game. She threw, away, away, threw a lot of bad passes and tried to force them, but we're seeing her coming back into her actual game that she plays that we love to see every game. Williams, who got into the game, replacing Marcos, gets that rebound. Taken down the court by Seaman. She puts up a three. And Seaman is good. <laughs> a three point. Turn that on the floor. That's right. It's time for the Hawks to get a little conversation with their coach. Hey, you're watching MSTC Sports, GEHS TV. We'll be back after this timeout. Food is life, it's the building blocks of our amazing bodies. Food is strength. It powers us in the pursuit of our full potential. Food is energy. It fuels our accomplishments, big and small. It nourishes us in mind, body, and spirit. Food is health, fitness, and our future. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows. Price Chopper. And we are back. We saw a, wow, that was impressive. <laughs> impressive. Th what's that, three? The two, three three-pointers that we've had just the start of this half, and we're not even halfway through the third quarter. 26 to 31. What was a 13-point deficit early yes, on? Yes, it was. In the uh, second half. And Let's here is Aaliyah Moss with the steal. Not able to finish. The ball's off the feet of Liker. Wow, you wanted to see that finish. They had numbers. They had numbers. But I love to see this liveliness just coming back to life in the start of this third quarter. We're four minutes and 11 seconds in, and it's just been exciting and energy, and it's just the momentum is high right now. You see? Great pressure on defense. Oh, boy, that was a horrible miss. The basketball for guys was with the Trailblazers sure at that moment. <laughs> they were our friends. Like a pull up. Jumper. That's it, and it's good. Okay, I was about to say, you better not. <laughs> it's going to bounce out, out again. Rim. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you, you point think your finger about at it. the ball. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you better get right. Get right. <laughs> so a three point, a 13 point lead dwindled down to three points. So that was a nice drive there. Nice drive, nice basket. That's by Michelle Schneller. Have a chance to match it and or go more. Just need to keep the scoring by a nice, nice pass in to Williams, but Williams kind of really didn't it's put a little a lot short. She just came up a little short. I didn't even see. Lob up the f and the SWAT team by Soraya Williams. She says, "Don't bring it up here." She said, "I made a, I didn't make the last one count." I didn't make my shot, but I'm about to make up by <laughs> swatting yours out of bounds. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, she meant that too. She did. That was a great defensive series. Ball on the baseline. <clears throat> Number 10, Braley Rogers is trying to find what to do. Soraya Williams jumps it from the ball, and it's Trailblazers ball cutting him, bringing it up the court. Tell you what, that was MVP of that series. That defensive series was Williams. She had a it's block. time to reset, reset. Block there we go. Here we go. Unable to connect. I don't know if she quite knew where she was when she threw that up. 
that's her classic move. She just has, she was pushed out a little bit farther because of the tippy tap of the ball going everywhere. Another rebound, rebound by, by Williams. Sarai Williams. Seaman takes the ball. She takes it up the court. I'm sorry, that's Liker. That's Seaman. That is Seaman. And the basket is good! Opportunity for a three-point play. That's the energy. That personal foul was committed by number five, Michelle Sneller. That is her second personal foul. First team foul of the half, as we see here in the replay. We'll wait for the replay. Going back into the game for Williams, who played an outstanding few minutes, uh, is uh, Marcos coming in to replace her. I don't know if I would have taken her out, but coach is giving her a breather. Hopefully Marcos comes in with the same intensity. Definitely Williams has made up for some of the other transgressions. Chance for Seaman to get this to within two, and she does it. So just a two-point two deficit, 31 to 33 in favor of the Lady Hawks of Olathe East. And you want the Lady Trailblazers to get another stop and another drive and tie this up with just that two minutes to go in this third quarter. Nice defense there by Platt. Don't want her to foul. Missed another missed basket. Double team. Double team. Trap, trap in the corner. Can't let you can't let anybody out. When you trap them in the corner, you got to keep them in the corner. There's no put your foot on the baseline and make her stop. I understand. Is that what you're saying, Coach? It's a great idea, but we got to officially, you know, get it. That personal <laughs> foul was committed by number three. Cunningham, that's her first personal second team foul, shooting two free throws. Number 20. First one's made. Kate Sophia. Whitehead knocks down her first free throw. Sophia Seaman has 13 points and four steals, so she's playing another solid game. First free throw is good by Whitehead. The second one is on the way, and it's no good. Nice uh, rebound by Seaman, down by three, 34 to 31. Minute and 37 seconds to go in his first, his third quarter. See nice movement of the ball. Seaman thought about it. She really wants to take control. Turnover by Seaman. She ran out of room and <coughs> lost the ball. Another turnover. Great pressure. Committed. It's up. Seaman's taking it. Foul. And draws the foul. Number 13. Number 13, Aubrey Rogers committed that block and foul. So Seaman will be shooting two free throws. That's the second team foul of the half. That's Aubrey's third foul of the game. First free throw is missed. <coughs> Big Tigers coming into the game, replacing number three, Ready Cunningham. Ready to keep the energy up. The score is 34-31, got it down to a three-point deficit. Marcos was able to rebound it and get it back out to Seaman, unable to make the three-point basket. But nice pressure defense. Left someone open, someone missed their assignment, and number 20, Whitehead makes some pay, so it's a five-point lead again, with just under a minute to go in the third quarter. Nick Tig said, psych. Gets it. Out to five seconds is what they're going to call against her. I'm oh, sorry, timeout. Timeout was called wisely Good by the coach. Call. So this is a chance then for them to still bring it back. We want to we wanna score, even if it's a two-point basket, get it to within three. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gotten it so close as we see Coach Liker there is uh, coaching his young ladies. A um, lot of intensity on there. They saw a huge deficit dwindle down to even within two points. So they're all in, they're all listening. Same thing on the side of the Lady Hawks. They too are all in to try to figure out what they can do to try to extend the lead. But they can definitely see that there's a tail of two halves. Mm -hmm. That first half ended with the Lady Trailblazers really just unable to, to do. I think the last minute or so, or last two minutes, of the half, they were able to come alive and put some points on the board. Yes. After going almost a full eight minutes without uh, scoring. Without scoring. 
So you really love to see the energy. You love to see the life. I'm sure Coach had some words for them. And we see this nice turnaround uh, for this quarter. So Lick Tig out first. She puts it in instead to Williams and drives it. Nice lob. But unable to use the backboard. And that was a missed shot by Seaman. You like what you saw. See nice good def nice defense by Liker out at the top. Ball was almost taken away, but number five was there. Schneller was able to take it away. And Ten Rogers has the ball. 20 seconds to go in this quarter. It looks like they are going Playing for the zone. Ball seems to be off their feet, and it was. And it it's Trailblazers' ball. Off of Schneller's foot. You've got 13.4 seconds. Coach, what are you doing on here? What are you doing here for this last, hopeful, last drive? Well, we know they're going to do some pressure defense, so you definitely want to keep somebody in the middle, have your guards. Well, or you can lob it like that, because... But unfortunately, it was too long, and Platt was able long. to save it, but not to one of her. Platt just couldn't yeah. quite get to it. And this. You're happy that that's all we go away with. So yes, at the end of the third quarter, 31 to 36, <laughs> Lady Hawks are leading. Our Lady Trailblazers will be back. You're watching GEHS TV, MSTC Sports. Food is life. It's the building blocks of our amazing bodies. Food is strength. It powers us in the pursuit of our full potential. Food is energy. It fuels our accomplishments, big and small. It nourishes us in mind, body, and spirit. Food is health, fitness, and our future. For freshness, selection, and low prices, Kansas City knows Price Chopper. And welcome back to the final frame of this competition. And what a competition it's been. The second half has come alive. It's a five-point deficit for our Lady Trailblazers, but there has been scoring from the start. Very few turnovers compared to what they did. We see another turnover almost committed. Seaman almost committed one, but unable to get anyone down beneath. No one there to block, and so number 33 makes us pay. Taylor, now a seven-point lead. It's always a game with a jump out like that because you always leave a man wide open on the opposite team. Three-point attempt is no good by Seaman, but number five, Schneller taps the ball out of bounds, so the possession remains with the Lady Trailblazers. She had a good look. Seaman, Seaman tosses it over to Moss. Freshman drives, 2-1-1 on one one and gets it blocked. The ball remains with. Seaman knocks it. Oh. Good rebound by Moss. Oh, nice. Doesn't quite get the put back, but it looks like there's a push foul call. Probably called against her, but wow. On just... the Trailblazers. <clears throat> Here's the replay, Moss passes it over to Seaman. Skip to Moss. Moss penetrates the baseline. Block. They called that last foul on number five, Seaman, so that's her first personal foul. Seven point lead. You'd hate to see them score here and take it further after coming so close. They're going to call a personal foul there against the Lady Trailblazers. Game. 
Kyle goes back, it goes into the game for the Lady Trailblazers. That basket was good. So now a nine point lead. They made us pay. Another turnover almost committed by Licktide, attempting to give it to Moss. You see Seaman with the ball at the top, six minutes and 43 seconds to go in this game. Seaman misses again. The shots now are not falling. They're too hard. They're not really disciplined, it seems, in this particular frame here. Have yet to score. With just under a minute and a half. Uh, a lapse from this quarter. There's a personal foul called as Lady Hawks are driving. It's going to be a, on the floor. That's a second personal foul second. on the loss. Seaman goes out of the game. 40 to 31. I can honestly say this about the Hawks. They have not, I don't think that they have, um, the fear set in. I think they continue to play their game plan. They did have some turnovers mm -hmm. that last quarter, um, but they managed to keep their heads about them. You see Licktide driving among the whole team, unable to score, probably wasn't ill-advised, shot, drive. Of course, when they make it, you definitely are okay with it. That was a perfect opportunity for the Trailblazers to take an offensive foul because she did come forcing herself in and they were already there. All they had to do was just stay still and not even move. Personal foul was committed by Number 55, Lick Tide, that's her first personal foul. 16 foul, so six fouls against the Lady Trailblazers. Two fouls against the Lady Hawks this half. So we see Williams going back into the game. Maybe Williams will bring some energy with that. She's played very well. Instrumental in that third quarter run, defensively and offensively. She made some things really happen, so. Number five, she never knocks down her second free throw. Ten point lead. See Liker, ball, ball out to Havlick. Oh wow, in and out. That was a good shot. It was good a beautiful shot. shot. Mm -hmm. Moore just did not go down. It would have been nice to get that to within seven. To stop it here and get a good shot on the other end as we see number 33. Here's the ball. hands are up. Finally lets it in. Good basketball. Oh, yeah. the so that's a 12 point lead. You see Cunningham taking the ball. So at this point in time, five minutes to go in the game. They've got to make something happen down by 12. Pull up by Liker. No nice rebound by Cunningham, but a foul was called. Over the back, they call it. That was a great hustle by Cunningham, but she did get the foul. That's going to be a, a seventh foul, so it's a front end of a one on one. Front end of the one on one is number 13, Aubrey Rogers. Chase off the mark, the ball is rebounded by a senior. <coughs> Having a driving, but unable to get a shot. Maybe she was contemplating or hoping to receive contact, but they did not call foul. You know, we highlighted number 13, Aubrey Rogers, in the beginning of our pregame. However, I'm noticing that number 13, uh, number 10, Braley Rogers, is the one who's really, really, really showing out today for the Hawks. Yes. She has done so well. She's been scoring. She's playing great defense. She's working the ball around. She's just leading the team as a point guard very well, and she's only a freshman. Nice rebound and drive by Sophia Seaman. She drew the flat foul. That's a third personal foul committed by number five, Michelle Schneller. 
Seaman will be shooting two. First basket is good. Let's take a look at the boys upcoming schedule with the pandemic continuing to affect a lot of student activity. The Tempest should bring your games right into your living rooms, offices, and mobile devices. You can find all the home games right here on GEHS TV and MSTC Sport. Tune in early for the pregame show and stay tuned. Stay with us for the postgame show. We take pride in making sure you don't miss any of the action with our Trailblazers. So the second free throw is good by Seaman back down to a 10-point deficit. Four minutes and 15 seconds to go in the game. You see nice defense being played by Havlin. You see Newman is in the game coming out to help. You see Cunningham. Cheryl Blazers are playing, playing a semi-pressure defense, man on man. It yeah. worked in their favor. Now we got the ball coming up by Seaman. Kicks it up to Cunningham. I want to say they don't need a three, but they need to make the baskets that they do have count. Got to take their time, make a good shot. Their signature shots is usually shooting off balance, but at this time we got to take good, smart baskets so we can make sure we're on balance and get the ball up there. Wisely. Great rotation to stop number 20 from getting in the paint and getting an easy layup. That's we are unable to protect number 33, Taylor. So, personal foul was committed on the made basket, and that was Liker's personal foul. That's her second foul. And 33 got the point, and will try to complete the three point play. Rebound by Cunningham. Seaman, Seaman drives. Leading with her right shoulder. Cunningham bounces it back out to Newman. Newman for the three point attempt. No good. It goes over the basket, and so that's a turnover. She had a good look. Pressure defense, full court. Got the double team with the ball. Two minutes and 49 At seconds. At a point of a double team though, whoever's by the baseline has to make sure they cut that player off so she can't go up the sidelines like that. Good pressure. Gotta get back though. Great job, way the rotate by Cunningham. She got the ball in her hands and tipped it out of bounds. Still Lady Hawks ball. Pressure defense still, man on man. Taking the ball out is Rogers. Oh, almost deflected by Liker. Ball was touched by Seaman off of her leg and she worked to create a double team. Clack goes back into the game, replacing Newman. Has got away with the bump. The referees around them to play. Getting closer to the two-minute mark. Lady Hawks are content. Passing the ball around and nice attempt there, but it was in and out just like it has been for us all night. Liker, I'm sorry, Liker threw that ball up a little bit too hard. You like seeing the use of the backboard, but wanted to be a little bit more controlled and a personal foul was committed after the missed shot. The Lady Trailblazers are doing great with getting inside. They just have to get a soft touch on the shot so we can get a finished shot at the end of that nice move. Personal foul committed by number 11, Michael. That's her third personal foul. Let's see 13, Roger shooting the front end of one and one. Miss, rebounded by Platt. Platt takes it up the court. Just under two minutes to go in this competition. Nice 
Nice drive by Liker. Nice. Liker got in the paint, drove, and finished. Timeout is called. Let's take a look at the Lady Trailblazers' upcoming schedule. Reminder, all home games will be broadcast right here on GEHS TV and MSTC Sport. Tune in early for our pregame show where we'll offer you an in-depth look inside the team's keys to the game. Stay with us after the game for our post-game show where we break down the game and hear from our coach. You can find it here, right here, on GEH TV, GEHS TV, and MSTC Sport. Olathe West and Olathe Northwest coming up on the 20th and the 23rd, respectively. It's a 10-point ball game. A minute and 45 seconds to go. Definitely the third quarter was probably the most aggressive quarter for most teams. We've seen the Lady Trailblazers come in with Williams making major contributions down low and making even the wise shots. Who's been quiet is Marcos. I haven't heard much of Marcos little bit. as far as scoring. And I haven't seen her on the ground one time this game. Gotcha. But you know what, though? She, she The first half, though, she was playing pretty hard with the in the paint. She was being very tough on defense. She wasn't making a lot of noise on the offensive end, but I've seen her do a lot of box outs and do a lot of just great defensive stance of keeping her post player in front of her and out the paint. Nice, nice defense there by Cunningham. Rogers, Rogers continues to hold the ball. And shooting up to the three, they take some time and take a drive for the hole. And she gets the high percentage shot, Taylor. It's a 14 point, that's a 12 point lead. 47 to 35. One minute, 14 seconds to go. And it's good. Sophia Seaman knocked down the three. Nine point deficit. So at this point, they're fouling with a minute and five seconds to go. And the Hawks have not been great at the free throw line this, this game. The Hawks does. And the Hawks don't have a really high free throw percentage, so this is a good risk to foul them so they can come back and try to make another three and catch back up in the last minute and five seconds. So, yeah, so we are seeing number 13, Rogers shooting her, and she missed it. Second free throw is no good. Abner gets the ball, takes it up to Cunningham. Cunningham takes up the court. You don't have much time. We have one minute. Down by a nine. And so this is the time when we've got to play really aggressive and get a good shot. So where the three pointer is going to be going. For the three. Almost. Bounced out. 47, 46 seconds to go. And they have to foul. Platt will get that. Stop the clock, King. Hope for a miss on the free throw line so they can come back and get another shot attempt. Okay, that is Platt's fifth foul of the game. Coming in for Platt is number 55, Ligtai. Number 10, Braley Rogers at the free throw line. First basket is missed. I believe that's the first free throw she actually missed this game. Second free throw attempt is up. Another miss for number 33, Kaylee Taylor got the rebound, and now there's a second chance for the Hawks, and we have a steal. Seaman goes up, gets the basket to count. Seaman knocks it down after her steal. 33.8 seconds left, and the Lady Trailblazers are trying to keep it alive. That's a, that's a full timeout that's called. We're going to remain right here. So down by seven, but we're going to see here in this replay what allowed us to get it to within seven. Nice steal by Sophia Seaman as she takes the ball 
herself and just finishes the play. Yeah. Saw several angles, but trust, take our word for it, she finished the play. That was a beautiful, sneaky little steal she did there. I love to see when guards sneak up and just go for it and accomplish all the way down the court with the finish. So down by seven, 33.8 seconds to go. No more timeouts left for the Lady Trailblazers. So right now they're gonna be content with having to foul. Stop the clock. If not, if not being able to, if not being able to take the ball away when it's inbounded, they're gonna have to foul. Full timeout had not been completed. <laughs> so, if you know anything about that, you get on the clock. And you figure if both teams are ready to go on the court, then you just go ahead and let us let it go. <laughs> so I think they may be wanting to reset the clock. I think it was at about 33 seconds or something. I'm not sure. Uh oh. We're gonna get it together. <laughs> They'll get it together here. Seven seconds. So we are waiting to get the clock set. this. And we want to honor our student of the month, our student of the week, uh, freshman Madeline Christian. See personal fouls committed early on. Once again, Madeline Christian, we want to honor her and recognize her. She placed as one of the 20 runner up in the New York Times 15 second vocabulary video. And so, congratulations to her and to her family and to her team. Uh, excellent job. We love showcasing the scholars. Uh, that's a 15-second vocabulary video contest. And you can read more if you go on to the district's website to find out what it was that she did. But congratulations, Madeline, on a job well done. So the first free throw was missed. That was by Rogers. Second free throw is good, so it's back to an eight-point lead with 29 seconds to go, and Cunningham has the ball. Gives it to Seaman. Seaman is content with passing it on to Liktaj. This is the time now where they don't have much time. And Seaman From deep. Very deep, but unable to make any contact. So that's going to be a turnover, or the ball's going out of bounds. So eight point advantage. Pressure defense. Good hit by Liktaj but it's out of bounds, staying to be the Lady Hawks ball. 12.6 seconds left. That's time off the clock, so you either get rid of, get the ball or you foul the player. Exactly. Save those precious seconds. Still down by eight. Personal foul committed by Seaman. 33 Taylor will be shooting free throws, two free throws. And you look at this court this half, there's only been three committed, three fouls committed by the Hawks this half. Uh, so a lot of the fouls that we've committed have come towards the end as we've tried to we've tried to preserve the game or extend it. First free throw was missed. 
There are a lot of lessons that young ladies will learn by watching the film, and um, especially after you have that dynamic, explosive third quarter. Second free throw is missed. Seaman, of course, has the ball. At this point, she just needs to drive. Drive and score or hit a three or something, but she's passing it off instead. Not too much time to do that. Liker puts it up, missed. Put ball. back by Cunningham. You got a last two points. Bas basket will count, but that is still not enough. 48 to 42. We'll be back after this commercial break. Creation. Nice drive. Knocks down the side shot. See, that's her signature shot. We see the ball there to Cunningham. Cunningham moves around, gets it to Seaman, and Seaman drives and connects. Between two people. There you go. Beautiful. And we see here Liker taking the ball down court, off to the side to Lick Tig, and that was in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. That three point basket. That third, that third quarter, we saw about three made three pointers as we see Liker driving to the hole. And Getting the ball in one of her times when she was playing with uh, some control. A three point basket attempt by the freshman Newman, and she sinks her second one of the game. Like nice a pull up. Nice pull up, and it rolled in. Nice little rolling block and bounce. <laughs> <laughs> nice home bounce. We're getting ready to destroy the rims of that not going in. We saw a nice kickback, and another three point basket by Lick Tig. So we are seeing some great, great highlights. Once again, I believe the scholar athletes can see that basketball like it. Great be, tough moves. Should be happy with that. We see another basketball scene. Well, there's going to be a break in action. We're going to be back here in just a moment. And we're going to set up an interview with our coach so we can speak to him about the game. You're watching DEHS TV, MSTC Sports. <laughs>
Stryker, thank you so much for joining us. I know this was a disappointing loss, but boy, we saw some great action in that third quarter. Tell us from your perspective what you thought about, about the game and, and, and how your players were resilient, kept fighting back. Talk to us. Well, I, I would agree. I thought our girls played hard, and like you said, they were resilient. They, they, they no quit in them, and I'm proud of them for that. I mean, that's, that's something we can always count on. And, uh, you know, I think it was just a matter of execution, particularly on the defensive end early. Uh, we were late to rotate and kind of, out of you know, out of position or slow off the ball, uh, which is frustrating. Uh, but against a team that executes well like they do, that, it's going to cost you. And I think I think that's kind of what, what happened. Uh, there's some little things other places, but that's the main one. And I think you think you look at the first quarter, uh, about half of the first quarter, he had the lead, and then all of a sudden it seems like the turnovers. Yeah. We had more turnovers than we did points and so second quarter we kind of stretched it out there was that first four or five minutes of not scoring of that and so then you see at the end some of them run but third quarter they picked it back up yeah they really did they came out of halftime uh you know really kind of you know trying to execute things we talked about and it was mainly just trying to be you know be in better help off the ball and rotating quicker and then on offense just trying to go with our eyes up to, to, to draw the help and move the ball and we felt like when we did that, we got good opportunities. And, and I thought we got a lot of good opportunities in the paint that, that we missed tonight. Our, our percentage probably wasn't great there. Um, but, we, but we got the looks that we wanted. Um, and we made some good things happen on defense. And we just, you know, one, we dug a little bit too big of a hole. And then two, we just weren't quite sharp enough to, uh, to, to overcome it and, and get back in the lead. Well, I say congratulations to your young ladies bringing that deficit, the 13 point deficit down to within two at one time and then finishing off a game with a six point with a six point deficit. But you definitely got to like the, the, the fire in there. I know you want to get to those young ladies and to go and speak with them. Coach, thank you so much. Thank you for taking time to come and speak with us. Tell the young ladies that we were very proud. We were very happy, very excited. Hopefully they'll get a chance to go back and go watch the broadcast. But they really did some great things. But thank you so much and best wishes to you on the next competition. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you. You take care. Yeah, and we'll be back. You take care. We'll be we are actually going to end the show right here. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for watching MSTC Sports GEHS TV. We will see you the next time right here on this station.